Spring is in full effect, and that means two things. The NHL playoffs are in full swing, and lacrosse is heating up in the box. It's the Junior Beast Pod on Crolax TV. That's Klucha, and he goes short side low. The Rebels are right back in it. All alone, he's stopped by Luke Lewesky. And Kerr, what? seven seconds is all it took for Kerr. Quick shot, score. To quote the late, great Bob Cole, oh baby, it's been a hell of a start to the RMLL season as almost everybody, if not everybody, I actually think everybody has played at least one game. So everybody's dipped their toes into the 2024 season. And before we get into what took place this past weekend, I want to hear from you, Keenan, and how are you doing? Um, for those of you new to the pod, I'm Mohammed, joined by Prolax executive Keenan himself. <laughs> Tooting Kenan. my horn a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keenan, um, you know, what? have any general thoughts on what you've seen these first couple of weeks of the season? You know, we've seen a lot of good lacrosse to start this year. And, like, I know that sounds like kind of a generic blanket statement, but, I mean, like, you're looking up and down these rosters and through all of junior B and there's teams that are pulling out wins that we don't expect. There's teams falling where you don't expect them to fall. And we've got a little bit of everything going on. Like it's just a good season of lacrosse so far for these first two weeks. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I can't disagree with that. I think we've seen um, the energy start to build here as teams have uh, gotten their rosters together and, I mean, there's been, like we touched on in the first couple of pods, there has been a reasonable amount of turnover on some of these rosters, and so it takes a little bit of time. But um, the theme of games being tight and some good divisional battles already here um, showing up, I think it looks for a promising and an entertaining season here. It absolutely does. And speaking of tight games, your week two recap across Junior B uh, Saturday, May 4th, we're starting in the north, starting on the 4th, Mavericks taking out the Rebels, Rebels were at home, that score 6-5, Rampage knocking off the Outlaws 10-7, uh, Warriors taking two wins this weekend, a 12-11 victory over the Crude and a 16-7 victory over the Outlaws, and the Chill also knocking off the Crude 17-7, that game was in Calgary on Sunday, that was... <laughs> A little bit of a rough game for the crude, I will say, but uh, you know, you can't win them all. So I'm uh, looking into the South uh, Marauders take out the Mounties eight to seven Shamrocks an absolutely dominating performance over the Rockies 31 to one victory. Uh, Silver tips Marauders 10, nine victory for the Silver tips and the Mounties taking out the Rockies as well. 22 to one. Looking down into the Central Division, Mavericks over the Chill, 12-9. And you also had the Silver Tips over the Rampage, 5-2. And then looking to the East Division, the Lone Game, Kings over the SWAT. That game a little tighter than the previous one, 12-11 final score in favor of the Kings. So, I mean, after you give that rundown, Keenan, um, I think a, a, a appropriate place to start with this week is, you know, a little tip of the cap to the Mountain View Mavericks. You know, I underestimated this team, I think, especially after seeing, you know, what I saw in St. Albert, pretty sloppy game by both teams. Um, and my questions with this team really surrounded their offense. Like, what would they be able to provide, especially on special teams? Um but one thing I did know was this team was going to be be very hard working. They were going to bring a workman like type um, approach to the game. And Trey Christensen and you know his teams are always. He coached in Red Deer for a while. Went to a found a couple of founders, um, and you know his teams are always very very disciplined and they want to play fast and they do it very well. They get in on trans- transition. They take your time and space away. And you know what? They're showing they're showing up here. I mean, they're they're off to a two one and one start. 
um, beating the Rebels on the road six to five. And one kid that's really stood out for me anyway, um, and he's a kid that I noticed in St. Albert in that game. I remember talking about him on the broadcast. Hayden Sutherland scores four goals. And obviously, you know, that's impressive in any game. In a 6-5 game, that's doubly impressive. Um, he's got good hands, and, and he he really sees the floor well. And uh, he looks like a guy that can quarterback their power play for them. And so I wanted to, to shout out those guys out in Mountain View. And they're gonna they're making that central division look like it's gonna be an absolute war. No easy outs um anywhere. And the race for a playoff spot, unlike in other divisions, is gonna be gonna be fascinating to watch. Meanwhile, um, you know, the Rebels, they probably take a loss that they probably they didn't anticipate here. Um as we mentioned, a lot of turnover in the fort, and they're gonna ha- need big contributions from their younger players. Um, one area I think that they should be solid is a net. When you look, they got three quality junior B net minders at the moment. You know, and part of me wonders, is there a potential trade there for them to try and boost some er- other areas of their roster? And I know other teams are looking for goaltending. So that's something to watch. Um, if you're a fan of the North or just a fan of the junior B league in general. Yeah. You're um, totally right about, uh, the rebels there. I mean, I don't think they were expecting to lose that game. 6-5, especially coming off of a, I mean, you got the Mavericks who previous week, 6-6 six, six tie against the Crude. I mean, if you're the Rebels, you're looking at that game and you're like, okay, the Crude took a 12-8 loss uh, and then went into a 6-6 six, six tie on back-to-back nights. How do we lose against the Mavericks if they're, if the Crude who just lost the previous night are going to tie them? And well, <laughs> Then you get taken down 6-5. I mean, it's a bit of a wake-up call, I think, for the Rebels. And like you were saying about the Central Division, that being essentially the Division of Death. Like, I, you look at the standings right now, you have three teams over 500. Three teams over 500 in that division. That is absolutely wild to me. So, you're right, that playoff race is going to be something to behold. Up and down. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, no, that I mean, every World Cup, there's a group of death. And uh, I think it's safe to say the Central is going to be that moving forward. I would be careful, though, Keenan. Uh, I know you were talking about this team beat that team and how are we only beating this team or how are we losing to this team. I mean, the transit of property is a dangerous one. Uh, sports never work like that. And, true, uh, true. Right? So I I would say that, that um, I don't know if the Rebels are looking at it that way. I, I think – they've got some growing to do and they they've got um they've got a lot of new faces right and it's going to take some time for, for them to hit their stride um so let's go into what was maybe the game of the week over here and the silver tips and marauders silver tips taking it in overtime 10-9 and Mason Schrader man he palmed this game he took it by he took it and just absolutely palmed Face palmed everybody as he goes off for five goals and one assist, and he ties the game with two seconds left on the clock. Jeez. And obviously, you know, sports are all about drama, and this clearly had it. Meanwhile, with the Okotoke on the Okotoke side, Drew Dunbar hat trick, and former Silver Tip Cole Morris with a couple of goals. They got the production from their usual suspects, and in a game that you know, those are two contenders. I know I had them in my top five last week. Uh, Silver tips at three and Marauders at four, and uh, they lived up to the hype uh, as they uh, went toe to toe in uh, a down south. What did you uh, you take anything from that game, Keenan? I mean, edge of your seat action is how I would call the end of that game. You're down nine eight. You're you want to win that home opener, and you do it in a dramatic fat a dramatic fashion like that. I mean. How does it get any better for the Silver Tips fans to see that late of a tie and then a winner in OT? Like, that is what I call the epitome of lacrosse. And you it doesn't get more fun than that. No. Early season theater in Okotoks as the Silver Tips get a big win over the Marauders. Now, the Silver Tips would then travel to Red Deer on Sunday at late afternoon. And, you know, Carson Wells got the afternoon off the day prior in Beaumont, and they were able to pull the game out. 
He's fresh in this one, and he stops 46 of 51, but it wasn't enough. The Rocky View power play scores a couple in the third and really was the difference. Nate Schaubach, and I hope I'm not butchering your name, my friend. Uh, I apologize if I am. But, you know, he, he goes off with three goals. He puts the hat trick up. And, you know, Rocky View, they continue to lock down 16 goals against in four games now. <laughs> and for the kids at home, that's for the kids at home, that's four goals per game. So obviously, you know, they have an identity like I was touching on before. They're 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 tough. They're tough to uh to navigate when it comes to the defensive zone. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I mean, again, these two teams, I mean, I don't think it shocked anybody that this was a low-scoring game. Um, I hope you bet the under here. Uh, but, yeah, someone to pull it out 5-2. Yeah, that's uh, that's practically unheard of to be four games into the season and running at a four-goal against per game pace. Like, these games typically, like, in historically have been high-scoring. Uh, but this like not just with Rocky View per se, but like all of these teams, it's fairly tight, fairly low scoring. I want to say they're not, it's not like we're getting like three, two games, but compared to before, it feels like the scoring is down slightly, but still four goals against per game on average, very impressive work by the silver chips to start this season. Yeah, no, they, um, much like last year, I think um, they've been a really good regular season team for a few seasons now. Uh, it's more the postseason where I think um, they've got some questions to answer. But, um, no, they, they got something going again in in, uh, in Rocky View. And it'll be, I'll be interested to see uh, if they can maybe grab first in that division. We'll um, definitely be now, contending for it. So let's go down back down south here and um you know the shamrocks they they blast the rockies and you know there's not there's no real point in talking about this game but i do want to say that that i do feel for the re- rebranded lethbridge squad uh you know i'm not sure what their future holds and, and they've they're just clearly outmanned right now but i will say that i'm sure there's people there that are willing to fight for the club and, and keep it alive and i want to see them rebuild it uh there can't I think anybody around the organization, I, I think um, there can't be very many expectations. I think the focus now needs to be what can they do in their minor system and what can they do surrounding the team now to make it to make it appealing for players to want to go to. And um, just, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a tough situation down there right now. Um, but I, I just wanted to point out that I do feel for those guys and, and I hope it turns around pretty soon. So, and sticking with the Okotoks Marauders and the Southern Division, they also played another barn burner with the Mountaineers as they defeated them 8-7. Another razor-thin margin with these two teams meeting up. And just like their first-round playoff matchup was a season ago. And Okotoks walked out with the narrow victory just like they did about, I don't know, nine, ten months ago. Um, this is a, I think for me, what stands out about this game is that this is already almost a certain first round matchup in the South semifinal. So if I'm the coaching staff of these two teams, I'm spending all season trying to figure out, you know, how I want to play the other, what kind of maybe some type of edge I can find. One thing I am doing for sure is I'm adding two or three new power play looks right before the playoffs start. I think there's going to be some gamesmanship with these two clubs. Uh, I think that they're no, they know that they're on a collision course, and I think it'll be a great playoff series. Keenan, any thoughts on um, the Marauders just edging out the Mountaineers? I, again, I think the Marauders have been on a very, razor, like you said, word for word, razor-thin margins for this team. Earlier, we talked about Silver Tips just edging them out 10-9 in OT, and then the Marauders over the Mounties was 8-7. And I think you're absolutely correct about the power play looks. I mean, these are two clubs that are super familiar with each other in the playoffs. And quite frankly, I think the team that can, I don't want to say surprise, but the team that can surprise the other one first is going to move on to face the Shamrocks in that South Division final, almost guaranteed. 
Yeah. And I think it's a fast, another fascinating matchup because they're so, both teams are so conflicting in their styles. The Marauders have that high end offense. Like if you look at their box scores, they have like three or four guys that are consistently clicking for them. Whereas the Mountaineers are a lot more by committee, um, sound lacrosse, very fundamental type lacrosse. Um, they're well coached. So I, I think it's going to be uh, really interesting to watch those teams go at it as the year progresses in what should be uh, another really good first round matchup. Um, most likely. I mean, obviously it's still early in the season, but I'd be pretty shocked if those two teams do not end up meeting in the two, three. Now we're going to go East Keenan and, I got to give credit here to Saskatoon. They take Regina right down to the wire before ultimately succumbing 12-11. But you got to remember that they had just lost to Regina and the, in Regina 18-8. to um, And so they bounced back nicely here. And as usual, you know, Jackson Lenz gets his. He gets four, five points on the night. But Henry Elliott, stand up, my friend. Seven points. A Hattie, Roman Marshall, also with a four a big four point game. You know, that's not easy to do, especially early in the season, coming right back after a game that you struggled in. So credit to Saskatoon and uh you know, as they almost get on the board in the win column uh at home. I think I believe that game was played on a Friday night. Yes, it was played on a Friday and like to come back and push them right to the brink of it after essentially being out of it the entire game, losing 18-8 the previous week, that that's just pure credit to the SWAT. And looking at the schedule, these two teams don't meet again until the end of the season, like late June, early July. Kind of, um, yeah, late June is the next meeting between them. So I'm curious to see how both of these clubs will kind of uh, not flourish but kind of evolve over the season. And it will be a very exciting matchup when these two teams meet up again at the end of the year. So we're going to fly back north now, and we're going to go. This was a Saturday night game. Warriors have to come back late and take the game back from the crew. Um, 12-11, they win as they've now won... 11 straight home games in the regular season at Bill Hunter and 13 overall. If you include the two uh, North final playoff games that were played at Bill Hunter last year against the rebels, I thought the crude, you know, played a really good game here offensively. Um, I pinch made some huge stops late second, early third to hold the warriors in. And I thought, you know, the, the turning point in this game, I thought the crude lost the game in the final minute of the second. Those, there was two bad goals, um, that they gave up uh, in the final like 50 seconds of that second period. Mm. And I thought it just absolutely crushed them. Um, and then, you know, the third started and, and Pinch held his ground. And then, you know, the crew just came up a bit short. But that's um, that's the, the championship pedigree that the Warriors have shown this last couple of years. And, you know, they were able to pull it out as they at the time went to 1-0. and Luke Royer... I mean, they also did beat the Outlaws uh, 16-7 on Sunday. But, you know, what I really want to touch on here is, man, Luke Royer. He went off this weekend. He goes seven. He goes for seven goals and seven assists, 14 points. Keenan, honestly, <laughs> and I've been a- around this sport my entire life. That's more points than 60% of the league will get all season in one weekend. <laughs> but it's so much more that, than that with this guy. He really is the pulse of of this team. Like he's a heart and soul. I guess the best way I can put it is Ben Royer. He controls the game. So poised, smart. You know, he's one of the, one of the better ball control players that that in the junior B in the country, really. But Luke Royer is the life of a game. Like he's, he embodies toughness, skill, intelligence, resilience. I mean, everything you can think of that, is key in a lacrosse player like he has. And, you know, there, there might be more guys, there might be guys more talented. There might be guys more gifted, but when it comes to guy, a guy that players can feed off of and can look to for leadership and know that he's going to be there when it really matters, 
he's a poster child for that. Um, and uh, I think the, the biggest reason why I wanted to, to talk a little bit about him on this pod is because I think he gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. He flies under the radar. You know, there's, you know, Ben Royer and Simonson and Josh Stewart and Dickin. And there's so many guys, right, that that I think are a little bit more noticeable at times. But, man, like, he did everything for the Warriors. And, you know, now that he's in his last year, I guarantee you there will not be another player that they will miss more than him when his time is up. And I think he deserve, deserves a lot of notoriety. And so I wanted to I wanted to tell people a little bit about what he, I think he means to that team. Well, if he wasn't flying under the radar before, he's definitely not doing it now. <laughs> but no, <laughs> this kid, I mean, you're absolutely right. And like from doing Warriors games oh, over the last season and now two weeks, um, Luke Royer is a name that like, when you think Warriors, like you said, you don't think Luke Royer off the top of your head just because of how stacked that team is up and down their entire roster. But yeah, Luke Royer, I think you're right when you say heart and soul of the Warriors. That kid, he has it all, and he's going places. I will say that. He's going places. Yeah, and so the Warriors now, they travel down south. They've got these... Hill and the Silver Ticks, I believe, this weekend. And so it's going to be, they're going to be an interesting watch just because I know that they're pulling up some affiliates um, from the from their Tier 2 team. And it's because the Junior A team is starting their season, so they're going to have guys playing for them as they look to make their some of their final cuts. So watch out for that. Um Pay close attention to who may or may not be on that roster at the end of the weekend. Uh, I think it'll be mostly status quo. I think there might be some guys that affiliate uh, moving forward, but I don't know that for certain. So, but that's just something to watch for people out there. And come Monday especially, you might want to check out what that looks like and what the landscape and how that may shift moving forward. Just to finish up here um, on the north, the crew then after that loss on Saturday night had to travel to Calgary to take on the Chill. Um, and I'll keep saying this, the Chill do take this game by a final of 17-7. to I'll continue to say, like this Chill team, their offensive talent is right up there with the best in the league. You know, maybe just underneath the Warriors and Shamrocks, but it's pretty close. Um Another name that I've never actually heard said before, I don't know the kids, so apologies if I mess this up, but Orion Sardison um, for seven goals. And like <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and I, I, the, the guy's Cy Young, he's got 14 goals and one assist this year. Filthy. I mean, uh, no. it's unbelievable. Like he's truly Cy Young for anybody that doesn't understand the Cy Young reference. Cy Young is an award in baseball for pitchers and went, who have the best record. And so, like, you know, you'll see, like, 21 and 4 or whatever, like, you know. So when stats are written, you'll have a goal, like, goals are on the left and assists are on the right. So that's the reference there. He's got way more in the goal column than the assist column, just like a pitcher would have – a high-end pitcher would have way more wins than he would have losses. That's the reference. But – no, he truly is. Like this guy just scores goals. I, he does. It doesn't look like he passes the ball all that much, but he scores goals, and you know, that's the hardest thing to come by in today's day and age. So, you know, shout out to Orion, man. The guy's going off. Also, in that game, Cash Bannister goes for two goals and four assists, and Zarski gets a, a the rookie gets a patty as the chill stomp the crude. I watched the first period of this game, Keenan. There weren't a whole lot of saves being made. I think that's something the crew have been really struggling with. Um, you know, uh, they, they're really missing a horn. Hopefully he can get back in the lineup for them. Um, but the one, the biggest thing out of this game that I want to point out is that this was a scheduled loss um, mm -hmm. for the crew in so many ways. Like, why do we do this? They play the Warriors the night before, then get on a bus at 8 a.m. the next morning. 
That's like basically hell on earth for anybody who's done that before and then have to go play a game. Um, you know, I, I was pretty confident that we'd see this type of a result and that's what took place, unfortunately for the crude. Um, but I think moving forward, I mean, I know there's some teams that request this type of thing where they just want to go play the game and come back. But if that's the case, play it on a Friday or Saturday night, you know, I mean, playing it sun- on Sunday at two, at 2 PM, just doesn't make a lot of sense. So no. I thought that was a tough one for them, but nevertheless, full credit to what I think is a very good chill offense as they take advantage of the spot and win 17 to seven. So I'm curious to see what the chill do against the Warriors on Saturday. It's going to be a good matchup between those two. Yeah, no, that should be a good game, especially, you know, I mean, it's a good opportunity for the chill where the Warriors are going to be a bit short handed. Um, so Keenan, Having said all that, um, let's get into some power rankings here. At five, you know, I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep Regina there. You know, I, I know that they had to fight to win in Saskatoon um, on Friday night, uh, but uh, I think the boys from out east deserve a little bit of recognition. I've got them at five. Um, three and four have to stay the same. I mean, this is basically, you know, what it's just going to be the same as last week. Like, you know, the silver tips knock off the Marauders. Um, so the Marauders are going to stay at four and the Silver Tips are going to go are going to stay at three. Uh, there's really not much to say about that. I think we talked about both teams at length. Um, and then, you know, at one point I was thinking about flipping the Warriors up over the Shamrocks just because they look like they're very similar to what they were last year in terms of personnel. But uh, it's not time for that yet, especially with, with what – going on this weekend so i'm going to wait on that see how things play out so the warriors are going to stay at two shamrock stay up top and we'll see how things go from there um those are my power rankings uh keenan you got anything different uh yeah i'd probably uh instead of putting the uh swat there at fifth i would have to say regina no no regina is at five. Oh wow i definitely misheard that okay that's on me uh, yeah, I know Regina definitely fifth there. Um, looking strong. Good job holding off the SWAT uh, two games now in a row. We'll see how that progresses through the year. Uh, moving into fourth, I mean, I don't think I disagree with you. I think that the top four having, you know, silver tips there, you got the Warriors there, you got the Shamrocks there. It's point cut and dry. I think that's just how it is right now. And I still think we're a little too early in the season to be flip-flopping a lot on those guys because, yeah, you've got teams that have only played four games, but that's only four games. You're not even a quarter of the way through the year yet. So I'm hesitant to flip them until we get to that quarter point. But, uh, you know, I'm excited for that quarter point and uh, to see kind of where teams line up after this weekend. It's going to be a good weekend. Uh, on tap <laughs> this weekend on Crowlax TV, five game schedule for you. Friday night, 8 p.m. Outlaws visiting the Rebels at Game Moya Recreation Center. Uh, Chill visiting the Silver Tips Friday, 8 30 p.m. Game at Plainsman Arena. Back to back for the Capital Region Saints facing the Cardinals on Saturday at 6 p.m. and the Lady Silver Tips on Sunday at 12 30 p.m. Both those games at Bill Hunt Arena. And then Sunday, 2 p.m. at Plainsman, Warriors visiting the Silver Tips. That crossover for the North and the Central coming at you on Sunday. So, Mo, as we're winding it down here, any uh, Junior Beast final thoughts that you got heading into Week 3? Uh, aside from the fact that I think that uh, there's some teams that need some some... I don't want to say that like provide a statement game, but I think there's teams that still need to find their rhythm. Um, so I think that, um, you know, now as we head into the middle of May, the schedule starts to really ramp up. So I think teams are going to have some opportunity to get some flow going in their game. I think you'll see the quality of the lacrosse increase gradually as the season goes along, as you usually do. Um, and I'm really, I'm just really looking forward to seeing, um, how some of these younger players on, on these teams step start to step up and fill bigger roles um, as the as the season moves along because I think there's a lot of room for that this year. 
And I, I'm I'm fascinated to see how uh, these division races shape up. Absolutely. And my game of the week to watch will be Friday, May 10th, the Silver Tips and the Chill. Uh, you said earlier the Chill and that offensive firepower. I'm curious to see how it's going to line up against the Silver Tips. Uh, again, four goals uh, against per game right now. We'll see if it holds up to that Chill firepower. Uh, they are 1-3-0 oh on the season but there's still lots of season left for the chill to turn it around. Yeah. And if you look at their schedule, they've played a lot of games inside that division, which has been an absolute bloodbath. So, um, you know, as they start to play more games outside the division, I'll be, uh, I'll be interested to see how they, they, uh, they look. Absolutely. Well, thank you for tuning in to junior beast. Mo, where can people find you? MJ underscore nine on X and M dot Joma on Instagram. And I really encourage, you know, especially the players, um, coaches, uh, reach out. You have something that you want to be talked about. Um, you want to let me know about something. Um, feel free. I'm always available. I should be able to respond to you pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, and I'm always open. I always love talking to cross. If you have anything to say at all, I mean, even if it's just feedback about, about the pod, um, about whatever you're seeing out there. If you have some information, pass it along. Um, I encourage it all. Awesome. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Junior Beast podcast here on Crowlax TV. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. We've got junior lacrosse action all season long for you. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or X, I guess, and Facebook at Crowlax TV on all platforms. Thank you for tuning in once again. We'll see you next week on The Junior Beast.